Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn, and today I'll be by myself, but as always, welcome to our show. Well, guys, we're back after the international break, and unfortunately, my co-host Patrick will not be with me today, as uh, he's currently dealing with a uh, with a little bit of a cold or a you know a fever that he's got right now. So, um, we hope to have you back next week, buddy. But uh, yeah, we had kind of a slow week, I would say, after the you know most recent international break. Obviously, we have Christian Plissick out injured at the moment, West McKinney as well. But you know, we had a really good performance this weekend from another rising Bundesliga star. Um, we also had, you know, another player in Holland uh, continuing to score. And then finally, we want to finish today's episode with another player who had a goal and assist this weekend over in England and is, uh, you know, a player who's quickly becoming um, very relied upon by his team this year. So all that and more in this episode. All right, guys. So the first player we want to talk about today is Tyler Adams. And Tyler Adams actually started and played 90 minutes for RB Leipzig over the weekend in their big 5-0 win over Hertha Berlin. So, you know, Tyler, like I said, started in this game, looked really, really good for, for Leipzig, you know, continuing just where he left off right before international break. And he actually picked up an assist in this game. And I think we'll start there because the assist was was really incredible. And I wish we could show it, but, you know, the Bundesliga has a lot of strict copyright rules. So, unfortunately, we won't be able to do that. But basically, it was a ball that was played to him, which he kind of let run by him. And then he just pinged a really nice, um, what I guess you could call like a long through ball, right through uh, Hertha Berlin's defense. Um, you know, found Yusuf Poulsen, who then took a few touches and then chipped the goalkeeper for, you know, a, a good goal that uh, lived up to the standards of the assists. So, um, yeah, it was a fantastic play. I think it was, it has to be Tyler Adams' best play so far in the Bundesliga, at least best sole play um, in the Bundesliga. And it was, it was incredible. Um, you know, obviously, I think Tyler Adams' strength isn't long passing. Um, not to say they can't do it, because we've seen a few passes in the MLS where um, I know there was one assist that I think Brian Shredder tweeted out again this weekend after that uh, assist he had this weekend. That was, you know, a phenomenal long pass um, that he played, I think, in 2017. Um, but it's definitely not something I think we see a lot from Tyler Adams. So to see it this weekend and to see, you know, a fantastic play like he had, um, yeah, it was really encouraging. And obviously, you know, like I said before, he, he left off or, uh, you know, he played in this game just as where he left off, uh, you know, the last game for Leipzig that he played. He was, he was fantastic. He was very involved all game, you know, winning balls back, um, you know, playing quick passes, playing dangerous passes. Um, and was really kind of like the engine of Leipzig on the day, in my opinion. Um, and just to kind of uh, back that up a little bit, he also completed the most passes of any player on the field um, in the game. And I think, think that was uh, 71 passes completed. So, um, you know, obviously a game where Leipzig kind of dominated, but I think Hertha Berlin's not a horrible team. So just to show that they, you know, had their way with them on the day is, is a really good sign. Um, so now, you know, Leipzig sit in third very comfortably, three points ahead of Eintracht Frankfurt, you now sit in fourth. And I think, you know, if they can obviously keep up this form, which they haven't lost, I believe, since, you know, last year, um, I think they'll comfortably, you know, get a Champions League position by the end of the year, or finish in a Champions League position. But, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, um, it's a little unrealistic to say that they'll continue to um, – you know, not lose games to finish the year. Um, you know, they might lose a game coming up here, but I think, you know, if they play the way they've been playing, I think they have a chance to beat, you know, anyone on any given day. So, um, yeah, really encouraging. Also, um, just to finish up here, you know, Tyler Adams was not involved, however, in Leipzig's 2-1 win um, in the DFB Cup on Tuesday of this week. Um, and that was because he actually had um, adductor injuries or an, an adductor injury. And this was actually a scratch right before game time. So he was a, originally on the bench, but then got pulled. So I'm not sure the severity of this injury. Um, it seems kind of to me that it was kind of a precautionary 
uh, pulling off the bench just because, you know, Leipzig will play this weekend and they have a pretty deep team, especially now that some of their players are back from injury. So, you know, he was on the bench. I don't think he would have saw time in this game unless, you know, there was an injury or the situation really warranted it. But I think they were just being precautious here and kind of saving him for their game, you know, this weekend. And if he was really injured, then, you know, we'll find out more this week, I guess. But that's just my take. Um, you know, Leipzig, like I said, got the win on the day. So they'll be in the semifinals now of the DFB Cup. And it was a, a hard game from what I saw. Um, you know, I didn't really get to watch this game, but it looked like, uh, you know, Leipzig was taken to extra time and they won right at the death. So, um, you know, a good win for them. And, hey, another opportunity for Tyler to win win a trophy over in uh, Germany. So, um, yeah, got to love that. Uh, but, yeah, let's hope. Let's hope he's not injured. Let's let's hope we see him this weekend. I'm not exactly sure who Leipzig play. I didn't see if I wrote that down, but I don't think I did. So, um, you know, we'll see. If he's back, that's awesome, and I can't wait to, to watch him play. If not, then we'll have to, uh, you know, hopefully get him back into shape quickly. But, uh, yeah, that's all for Tyler Adams this week. Um, now let's move over to Holland and talk about another player who's really played well as of late and actually scored another goal this weekend. And that would be Andrea Novakovic. So Andrea Novakovic actually started and played 90 minutes in Fortuna Sitard's unfortunate 3-2 loss to um, Wilhelm II. I think that's how you pronounce that team's name. But um, yeah, so, you know, the goal he scored was one of his uh, least impressive goals, I'd have to say. I think we'll show it here. But basically, you know, uh, there was a ball into the goalkeeper of Wilhelm II, and then the goalkeeper really just spilled it right to Andrea, who was in the right spot and finished the goal. But, uh, you know, like I said, another goal that makes now, I, I believe, three goals in the last four games for Andrea. So, hey, it's it's good to get some uh, momentum here late in the season, even though it is not the, the hardest to score of goals. Um, but, hey, if you're a striker, you got to be a poacher. So... Um, he was in the right position and was able to finish, you know, the chance when it came to him. So, uh, you know, like I said, Sitar did not win this game. So right now I believe they still sit four points ahead of the relegation playoff position over in the Eredivisie. So, you know, hopefully they can continue to get some or, you know, get some results here coming up. They don't want to continue to lose games. But, um, yeah, you know, Andrea's uh, – I think really started to come into his role as a striker for Sitard and has really kind of, you know, put scoring each game on his back and has made it kind of uh, his goal, his goal uh, to, to score in each game. Um, you know, obviously that's a striker's main goal, but I think, you know, he definitely feels uh, very comfortable and he looks very confident playing for Sitard. And I think, you know, when a striker's playing like that, I think, you know, he's holding himself to a higher standard. And I think, um, you know, starting to show on the pitch. I think he's he's starting to get into a good form here. And we'll see what the future holds for him. Um, you know, like we've said in previous episodes, we're not exactly sure if he'll be back with Sitard. But um, if he can keep them up this year, I think that's, you know, that's pretty good for them. Um, they're a team that hasn't really spent much time in the area to VC. And like I said before, I think the fans really like him and appreciate him. And I think he, he likes playing for Sitard. So, um, yeah, we'll keep monitoring his situation there. Um, you know, they only have, I, I believe, a few more games left in the season, um, something like six games, I think. So, you know, they really need to, to continue to, to get some points here and finish strong. So, um, yeah. Now let's go over to England and talk about Dwayne Holmes who scored a goal and had an assist this weekend. And he also started and played 90 minutes for Derby County in their big 6-1 uh, win over Rotherham United. So, um, you know, I guess going into the goal first, it was, I believe, for Derby's fifth goal. And it was basically a really nice finish off a rebound. Um, so, yeah, it was, you know, Dwayne being in the, the right place at the right time and, you know, was able to get a goal. Um, and then going over to his assist, which I thought was his, you know, more impressive play on the day. And that was basically a, a pass that he played um, perfectly into the box from kind of the, the right wing position. And it was this nice long curling ball that found the head of their striker for Derby's third goal. And, 
you know, it was a great ball from from Dwayne. Some some good um, some good vision to see, you know, the run into the the box that the striker was making there. And yeah, it was just more, um, you know, more fuel for the the Dwayne Holmes uh, train now with the USMNT. So um, yeah, he looked good on the day. You know, I I only watched the highlights of this game, so I can't say I watched you know him play the whole game, but. From, from what we heard and what we saw on Twitter, it was another good performance from Dwayne. You know, he's really stepped up for Derby this year and has become someone that Frank Lampard can really rely upon no matter what the situation is. So, um, yeah, just really impressive to see, you know, Dwayne come into Derby this year and be kind of a fringe player and now is basically, in my opinion, and I think a lot of other people's opinions, uh, a player that Derby can't drop. So... Um, yeah, it's incredible to see, you know, it shows the resiliency that, that Dwayne has and especially, you know, coming from last year playing in League One to, to now being a, uh, a player on a sixth place team um, in the championship, which is a big deal because that's a, a promotion playoff position. So, um, yeah, hopefully, you know, Derby can finish the season strong here. You know, we're kind of coming down into the final the final weeks of the championship because I believe they end kind of early to allow for that playoff uh, to kind of have time to to go on. So I, I think they'll end probably at the end of April here, um, if not early May. So, you know, that's only a few more games left for, for Derby to stay in that spot. And, hey, if you're in the playoff, you never know what could happen. Um, and maybe we'll see Dwayne playing in the Premier League next year. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's obviously, like like I said, a month away or so. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep reporting back to you guys. And, um, yeah. Really excited about Dwayne Holmes' uh, progress this year. And, um, yeah. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show. It's none other than Quick Kicks. Let's see who could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altidore over the wall. And that one is in. Josie Altidore from a long way out. The opening goal for the United States. So to start off Quick Kicks, Alex Mendez started, played 90 minutes, and also had an assist for Freiburg's U19s in their 4-0 win over Kaiser Slotsen's uh, U19s this past weekend. And Josh Sargent came on and played the final seven minutes for Bremen in their 3-1 win over Mainz this weekend. Now going over to England, uh, Matt Miazga started, played 90 minutes, and was also man of the match for Reading in their impressive uh, 2-1 win over Preston North End. And uh, going over to Denmark, Christian Cappy started and played 70 minutes in Hobro's 3-3 draw. Now going over to Germany, Julian Green uh, started, played 75 minutes, although he did come off due to injury um, in the 75th minute, but also had a banger of a goal um, early on, and that was in first 2-2 draw with Armenia Bielefeld. Now going over to Holland, Eric Palmer-Brown started and played 90 minutes for Nack Breda in their 1-1 uh, draw this weekend. And going over to England, Anthony Robinson started and played 90 minutes in a Wigan 0-0 draw with Brentford. Staying in England, Cameron Carter-Vickers started and played 90 minutes for Swansea City's for Swansea City in their 2-1 loss to um, Nottingham Forest this weekend. And then Serginho Dest uh, started and played 90 minutes for Young Ajax in their 2-1 win. And going over to Spain, Akil Watts started and played 90 minutes for Mallorca's U19s in their 1-1 draw this past weekend. And then we also wanted to give a special shout-out to Uli Yanez, who officially signed for Wolfsburg this week after turning 18. So, hey, congrats, Uli, and we'll definitely be keeping a close eye on you and seeing what you can do this, uh, this upcoming uh, season. And uh, going over to Belgium for our final quick kick, uh, Brendan hines Ike actually started and played 82 minutes and then also scored a goal for Kortrick in their 3-2 win um, earlier this week. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe down below. And also, you know, check out our Twitter and Instagram. You know, we're trying to post a little bit more here now that, um, you know, the international break is over and the season's kind of winding down. We also have, you know, the U-20 World Cup coming up this summer and also U-17 qualifying. So we're we're going to try to get some, some more activity going on social media. I know we've been a little bit quiet recently, but um, yeah, so check that out. And then also leave a comment, you know, if there's any topic you'd like us to discuss in one of our episodes or any players you'd like us to cover, 
Um, we'll take, you know, any comment into consideration. And, you know, as always, we love interacting with you guys. So, you know, that leaves kind of one thing left to, to be said at the end of this episode. And that would be one day we will win the World Cup.